Nick, you need 10 guys standing on a moving train for security. Not only could you have lookouts secure in the train itself, these guys are just convenient standing targets for things like helicopters, snipers, or a slight bump in the tracks. While these guys set this rope up for the ultimate clothesline, I'm left wondering who set up these perfect platforms that will somehow be strong and stable enough to pull this trick off. Dolph Lundgren even makes chewing gum look badass as hell. How are any of us mere mortals supposed to compete with that? F***ing Dolph. I think he broke me. Also, I promise that will be my last Rocky IV reference. But also, also, I'm probably lying. Having your big gun positioned for dramatic reveal instead of quick access to fence. Since the helicopter is clearly not in range of where the random bad guys are aiming their weapons, why are they still firing from that position? Was there extra credit available at the Stormtrooper School for aiming at things that day? How did this soldier in the bathroom not hear any of the gunfire going on for the last few minutes? One guy was shot right outside the bathroom door! Also, starting to exit the water closet before you fully secured your drawers. Why do they have Doc all Hannibal lectured up? Does he eat people? Is he a vampire? Is this actually a Blade sequel? Oh wait, that actually might be worse. Convenient revenge photo placement is convenient. Doc! Doc! Not sure why Doc thought he had to wait until the last second here to jump off. It's not as if he needed to shoot those high caliber rounds into the walls for his plan to work. That train was going to crash through that building no matter how much chicken he played with a stationary building. Also, he had no way of knowing this train would take out his target. Sure, we saw the object of his murder affection pacing around at the end of the tracks, but that's a huge assumption for Doc to make. Letting a crow stand on your head with its tail hovering above your mouth area. 22 full seconds of watching a helicopter land. What do you think this is, a Star War? You're in a black ops prison, does not officially exist? A black ops prison? Doc was on a goddamn train. So was he being transferred? And if so, why? Does this black ops prison follow the Haddonfield, Illinois guidelines of transporting dangerous prisoners? So why'd you get locked away? Tax evasion. Get it? Because it's true. Saying actors real crimes is hilarious. Do you get it? Tingling. Tingling, tingling. Jingling. I mean, why do you take me halfway around the planet to save this medical genius, as you describe? Very spendable. Not acknowledging the verbal irony in the room. What's your name? Christmas. Is that real? The question I've wanted answered for three Expendables movies somehow makes its way into the script. Is that real too? Oh no, I uh, I spend three hours every morning putting this on with a black biro. Biro? You leave those UK brands back on the island, Christmas. Around these parts, we have Bix or Sharpies. You're really hindering my desire to ever be pen pals. Break out my 49 Pontiac and kick that baby until the engine blows up. Not understanding how cars work. In case you're confused, it's Mogadishu, Wisconsin. Nice boat. Thanks, ladies. Don't let myself. Purposely misgendering your coworkers for the giggles. These terrible lookouts who somehow miss this entire crew boarding this dock with no cover and then walking directly toward them. Nice moment between Gunner and Barney here, but there is one issue. As the scene continues, we can tell Barney's entire sight line to the water was blocked by this giant boat. So who was he even nodding to? You're gonna wanna see this. See what? I'll show you. You better come take a look at this here in a bit when I actually show it to you, cliche. It can't be. What can't be? He's dead. I know, right? Sometimes you're almost sure based on someone's past actions that they're gone for good, then boom, they show up again like nothing happened. Shocking, huh? I'm not sure why anyone thought this travel via shipping crate was ever a good plan. It's a giant f***ing target that is moving slower than a sloth. Time to mow it on! HOAs. These high caliber rounds are apparently so powerful that they kill people just by zipping near them. Because you can frame by frame this entire section and not see a single direct hit or drop of blood. It's almost like the visual effects budget covered all the bullet trails, but none of the entrails. Huh? Told you. Ten seconds. It was 17. Hang on! Found you a ride. You mean the truck that has gunmen in it, along with a bunch of guys with guns right behind it? There's no logical way for Doc to use this crane to maneuver Barney into the truck without everyone gaining on them and killing them, but by God, Expendables 3 will find a way to make that exact scenario bullshit its way into existence. How much we get paid for this? Not enough. I am now extremely curious about what Barney and Christmas think is enough payment for murdering an ass ton of people. I would also like to ask Barney for the vodka martinis that have silenced the screams of all the men he's killed. You'll never know how I watched you from the shadows as a child. A reminder that there are two people in the bed of this truck who not only sustain no injuries in this maneuver, but one of them somehow manages to stand back up and grab this gun for a bit, even though the vehicle never stops swerving at high speeds. Make room for Caesar! Move your asses! Movie 
thinks it can just cut to ridiculous things happening without any context to the geography of the situation, and my loser brain will think it's cool enough to not care. Movie isn't all the way wrong, but movie is also very little of the way right. Who's that? A huge black guy in a boat. Why would Barney say huge black guy instead of simply saying Caesar? I feel like Stallone should have learned from Rhinestone that he doesn't have the best sense of humor. But I'm also pretty sure there were a ton of lessons from Rhinestone that no one in Hollywood learned. Pull over! <laughs> Uncommunicated, synchronized badassery. Also, all six of these oh-so-very-cinematic positions have zero cover from oncoming fire. You have a whole ass truck you could stand behind. <laughs> Vertical staring contests from 1,000 feet away. Having an unprotected simple push button labeled only with a down arrow that drops a f***ing bomb. This area that was crawling with so many enemies that they couldn't mow them down fast enough is now suddenly enemy-free enough to do some battle wound surgery. It's a miracle. I know the movie wants us to feel some sort of building rage here or some shit, but how in the hell is Barney flying this plane with his eyes this dilated? Those pupils are huge. He's gonna go blind. Sure, we, the audience, have only had about two minutes to deal with the tragedy of Caesar getting shot, but these guys have had a long flight, hospital admittance, and him getting situated and stable in this room to process their emotions. At what point after hours, if not days, of him getting to this point was someone like, I think it's time we all stood in the room again and simultaneously thought deeply about our love for Caesar. You know, I'm getting out of this business. And so should you. I was thinking the same thing, but nine years from now, I'm going to still believe that Statham can't handle this franchise on his own, so I'll give it one more go. I was supposed to meet a guy named Church. I was actually thinking Arnie was playing Church, but no, he's playing Trench, which gives two characters with names ending in CH that hire the Expendables, which is irritating. And then Han Solo's name is Drummer, and we already have an Ivan Drago named Gunner. This is feeling more and more like it's an 80s action movie homage brought to you by the estate of Dr. Seuss. So who are you? Operations Officer Drummer. Expendables gives the MCU the idea that Harrison Ford can be a good replacement for a guy in suit role in a movie. <laughs> and if you're getting your ideas from the Expendables, that's probably a bad sign. Your men are shot to sh What are you gonna do for a team? One guy. One guy took two bullets in the entire battle. And here's a sin for the bad guys can't hit our heroes cliche and one for your plot based hyperbole. In case you confused it with Moscow, Texas. You know... It's very hard for me to say this. Scene with Sly Stallone speech does not include the lines of I can change and you can change and I can change. We aren't the future anymore. Unfortunately for us, we're part of the past. Nice, we're getting set up for the next generation of action stars to come together. Keanu, Cruz, Charlize, some of the greats. This movie is going to rule. It's over. We're done. Liars. Live your lives while you can. And pay for all this shit on the table, because my need for a perfectly timed dramatic exit is more important than accidentally stiffing you with the bill. Bringing the dogs out just to greet the arrival of an overvalued piece of old canvas and the painting he brought with him. In case you confused it with the place worth visiting. Also, 15 full seconds of Sly Stallone riding an escalator. What do you need? New team. We tired the old ones. Just so we're clear, Jason Statham was all of 46 when this movie was shot. I gotta do it fast. I can't guarantee the best. Just give me some that don't give a damn. Capitalism. In case you confused it with your mom's Grand Tetons. You can't do that. He's right. Even the best shoot can't get this kind of loft under 200 feet. So I'm with Fraser here. In case you confused it with New York. Wait, you didn't include the state on this one? Well, here's a sin for inconsistent city titling. And here's another five sins for the rest of the times this bullshit happens in this movie. You know, in case you confused us with someone who gives a shit about fairness. What you might do? You guys, excuse me. Convenient assholes start conveniently fighting, so Luna has to conveniently beat them up and conveniently show Barney her skills. The hostess. Not the hostess. She's the bouncer. Then why the f did she show them to their table? I could do that. You want to slip on a dress and give it a shot? <laughs> Movie treats this idea as a joke instead of giving the audience what it really wants. Nah, it's all bullshit. I'm fine. What? Just checking you're still human. The director said, let's have Kelsey chomp an apple during this scene in case him lying about having cancer wasn't enough of clue that he was an asshole. Yo, Marlito. Did you hear that whistle? <laughs> Play it again. <laughs> <laughs> How hard is it to ADR an actual whistle there, instead of Kelsey just spitting through his teeth? Laser range, 25 millimeter high explosive airburst rounds. Can be programmed to detonate over or behind a target. You'll do. But that just sounds like a fancy gun. How do you know anything about his actual skill? This movie is 7% fight clubs. Hey, you didn't waste your time. And that is all anyone needs to say about anything for him to join the team and automatically know the next steps. Also, Barney fired four extremely capable guys, but is more than happy to hire one who he's only seen get the shit kicked out of him in a 
the fight. Does everyone in movies just automatically know how to park vehicles like they've arrived at the disclaimers part of the Ford commercial? You're seriously smoking next to aviation fuel? Barney Ross would be excellent. Boy. You wanna dance, big guy? This crock of young versus old force machismo plot tension bullshit. Using your dossier to take a whole decade off your age. So how do you feel about the pulp content of your orange juice? I'm a high pulp guy myself. I want orange juice I can chew, you know? Sorry, this old guy's lamenting being out of the game montage has been montaging about two minutes already and I had to think of something to talk about or I was gonna lose my mind. Does anyone drink peach juice? That stuff is a myth. I'll give all the sins back if this scene pulls an X-Force right now. We're on. Wait, we're just staking out in Bucharest right now? Why did they need to parachute in? You couldn't find better ways to enter that country undetected than freefall? And if so, how did Ross get here? I didn't see him jump out of a plane. Why would Barney be out in the open at a simple information gathering where stone banks could potentially spot him? They're supposed to think Barney is good at his job, right? Ladies first. Go ahead then, Thorne. Purposely misgendering your coworkers for the giggles twice of the same movie. The movie thinks we need to see every single jump these two take while moving down the building <laughs> and the movie is incorrect whoa glenn powell uses a toothpick as a prop in a movie cliche the buyer they're early robert davi is the buyer you're early the movie informs us of a scenario we were made aware of 30 seconds ago when cain slew his brother god banished him from civilization making me sit through sunday school lessons in my silly action film we're on Having a blackout be part of your plan without equipping your entire team with night vision. Barney Ross as well. I would like to say, at the very least, Ronda Rousey was given more to work with here than in Furious 7. But here I am, not saying that. They stuck their noses into other people's worlds and got fatally injured. Now they're the deletables. I'm pretty sure Stonebanks thinks this is an insult, but the joke is already in the actual name. They're already called the Expendables, so I'm not sure you're accomplishing the wit you think you are. Before you all start grabbing bricks to stone me at The Hague, you might want to check your own hands for blood. Having your villain actually make sense is fine, but I'm not sure the movie knows how much sense its villain is making right now. What do you want? What I want is for this movie to end. Can we start addressing my needs at some point? Then it's hard to beat an enemy when he's living inside your own head. That may be true, but that's not the issue here. The issue here is that f***ing Gunner said they wanted Stonebanks brought in alive. If that wasn't the case, Barney would have already killed him. But for some reason, someone decided this movie needed to chug along for another hour. So now we're having to listen to this unnecessary diatribe from Mel Goddamn Gibson. Since we were brothers. If that's true, I wonder when Barney is going to give Stonebanks a robot sex slave for a birthday gift. What's that? Uh, GPS tracker. Yeah. GPS tracker! And you're just seeing it now? How do you casually spot something in a scuffle that you didn't spot when you meticulously secured him for transport? We may need him. I need a body, find him. And he'll be alive because he survived this, this, and this. We got Harpo, Groucho, Gummo, and... And see, it's funny because in Lethal Weapon, Mel Gibson's character was really into the Three Stooges. But in this movie, he's into the Marx Brothers. And now I hate myself for currently missing all the I'll Be Back banter between Arnie and Bruce and Expendables 2. Having a camera that can't handle Red Eye. Never do business with the government. But I'm going to save you that heartache. You never will. Presumably he means because they will be dead. But question, why hasn't he killed some of them already? The goal is to get Ross to come to the rescue. He doesn't need all four of them. And wouldn't popping one of them while he's watching get under Barney's skin and hurt and motivate him even more? Oh sh! I've done this job too long. I'm out psychoing the psychos now. Oh well, risk of the job, I guess. Box of straps. Box of these things. Box of grenades. Box excitement. You know, ambush this guy couldn't sniff and under fire, the coolest cat ever. Just pure ice in his veins. We were pinned down once, like two bullets left. I looked over. No one beat of sweat. Antonio Banderas is kind of great in this, but he's just doing an imitation of whoever does the voice for Puss in Boots. And stealing a performance from another movie will always be a sin. You sure you want to do this? I like traveling. Loading one in the chamber and putting your gun away right before a really long flight. Who are those guys? My old team. Thinking you could tug on my heartstrings is something anyone who has ever seen a movie before already knew was going to happen. What's up with the local army? I don't understand a word this guy is saying. Someone pretends not to understand someone's accent even though it's crystal clear they understand what they're saying cliche. Short notice. Yeah, very short. Drummer survives talking to Jet Li like this. I'm not even here. Nobody's here. Jeez, movie. I realize part of the fun for the cast is that actors only have to show up for a day or two of shooting, but you don't have to say the quiet part out loud. The same thing you were busting that kid's balls about? 
Go ahead if we want to. And I knew you'd brag me about it, but I thought I would go ahead and make sure you saw it because I felt like the mission needed a comedic moment, and I decided I didn't want to give it one. Why'd your team let you go? Why is the modern now? Because the movie needs a bit of final backstory downtime before ramping into the big finale and you're the latest addition to the team. You have to have a deep connection before you start blowing shit up. Joseph Campbell was very clear on this point. Walking out in the open over these rocks instead of hidden in the forest. This is way too wrong. Sally don't like it. Is Sally someone more interesting than all of you? Can we get Sally in here? Halt! Out here in the open while it's still light out. Because why be covert ops when you can just be ops? I knew you couldn't stay away. Oh my god, it's a trap? That's sarcasm. Everyone but them knew it was a trap. Just wanted to make that clear. It'll take a regular Joe, what, 90 seconds to get out of there. You got, how about 45? Why give them any time limit if you can blow them up now? Gah, smoothie. Just running some code. Should be able to jam a signal. Why didn't you think of that? Did Toll Road just ask Gunner that question? Because I'm pretty sure Toll Road just asked Gunner that question. Got it. That's right. He used a weapon software to jam a radio signal to a network of bombs because the movie said he could. That's why. We can do this, but only if we do this together. Preaching a sermon about working together right before instructing everyone that the plan is to split up. Here's the plan. We're going to break up into small groups and go out to the ground floor. And I will make no attempt to lower my voice just to make sure anyone monitoring us knows exactly what we're up to. Granted, I'm not a gun guy, but do even gun people find any of this mindless, uninspired pew-pewing exciting at all? How much fun is there to be gained from un ending gun noises and watching people fall down. Enough's enough. Light them up. Isn't that what they've been trying to do? And if you had something stronger, why the f*** did you start with that? <laughs> Splashing the pot. Totally fine! Totally fine! I'm full of energy! You know, we're brothers now! You are not brothers. Now quit trying to compare a workplace with colleagues to an actual family. It's not the same f***ing thing. Granted, I'm not a tank guy, but do even tank people find any of this meaningless, uninspired, boom-booming exciting at all? How much fun is there to be gained from unending tank noises and watching walls fall down? Relax. I told you you'd give yourself a stroke. Hey, you sex, you're really gonna have him save the day in the exact same way as Star Wars in him. Rumors in the house! This is something they actually made Harrison Ford say in this movie. Hey, look! Had a guy riding a motorcycle? With everything else going on in this sequence, how does that even qualify as worthy of a glance? Nevertheless, a full-on look. <laughs> Christmas doesn't use the same whistle as Bonaparte did earlier. Can we see the scene again, but with Bonaparte's whistle? <laughs> that never gets old. This is not happening. You want to do something? Like maybe go back in time when you had all of them in the building and you could have detonated the C4 without giving them a heads up. Like that kind of something? My mom drove a tank back in Sweden. Which based on that comment alone does not give us the knowledge to understand why you can drive a tank, Mr. Gunner. This one's for Caesar, assholes! Rise of the Planet of the Expendables. Scene contains Doc and Christmas lustily looking into each other's eyes, but the movie never follows up on that lust. Granted, I'm not a punch guy, but do even punch people find any of this mindless, uninspired? This table is protecting these two from bullets. How is this table protecting these two from bullets? <laughs> Saying ooh-ah instead of shooting your gun. You finish it? Did he just leave his knife in that guy? It's kind of funny that regardless of how evil Stonebanks is, Barney and his friends will cripple an entire country's military by the time this is over and will face zero consequences. And that feels a little f***ed up. <laughs> No. How hard can it be to kill 10 men? I know Stonebanks has an ego for days, but he also knows how good Barney is, and therefore how good a team Barney would use would probably be. So I hate to keep beating the Dead Sea Force, but you really should have lit that place up when you had the element of surprise. Drummer, we're pinned down! Stop mumbling. Oh good, we're going to keep going with this drummer doesn't understand anything Christmas says bullshit. Let's get to the chopper! <laughs> So this is going to be exactly like Stallone fighting Van Damme at the end of Expendables 2, but with less chains. I liked the chains, damn it. I am Meg. He is not. Come on, buddy! Go! There's no amount of inspirational dialogue that will make it possible for Barney to make it to the helicopter, but he still will. And I will just sit over here beside myself wondering what the world has come to and whether or not I should have that third bowl of Rice Krispies. Pull me up, you idiot! Don't pull him up! Toying with a guy literally hanging on for dear life. To Caesar! Caesar! Salad clubs. You know, for a guy that doesn't take orders very well, you did pretty good. You know, for a guy that was supposed to be the central part of the young guy's crew, I totally forgot you were in the movie. Am I supposed to be feeling some sort of way about your non-existent arc? Love lost such a cost. Nice singing. I'll be excited to see all of you play a large role in the next one. Can't wait. You're old, you're predictable, and you never stood a chance. 
Where are the passengers? Passengers? Well, there are... F*** you! Passengers are gone! I just want to take another look at you. You got someone with us? You are terminated! Bonaparte. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. I've been there. He's been there. We all lived it. But I don't want your life. You better be right. But bam This guy needs an ego check. There are different kinds of family. I don't have friends. I got family. You should see me when I'm angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. You have a, a wife, girlfriend, because you know what I'm gonna do next? I'm gonna find her. Whoever she is, I'm gonna find her and I'm gonna hurt her. I'm gonna make her bleed and cry and call out your name. I tell you, the night in the taxi, I thought I was the lucky one just to be alive. Now, I think differently. You were the lucky one. I'm a very, very lucky man. No more, Chit-Chat. You don't know me, but I know you.